Dr. Dave here to talk to you about a sigmoid volvulus. Now, the word volvulus comes from Latin and means to twist. So, imagine this was your colon here. And no, it's not actually blue. But it can sometimes twist like this in certain areas, like the sigmoid colon here, the cecum here, and very rarely the transverse colon here. And even though the sigmoid colon is the most common part of the colon to volvulize, which might be a word I actually just made up, it is still not a very common occurrence, but when it happens, it can be quite dangerous. So let's talk about how it happens, what symptoms it causes, why it's so dangerous, and how we treat it. I am a colorectal surgeon in Denver, Colorado with Denver Colorectal Specialists. Please check us out on the web. I trained at the Mayo Clinic and I've been in practice for 25 years. So scrub in with me, Dr. Dave, as we talk about how we treat a sigmoid volvulus. Now, this is what a common colon looks like. And for most people, the sigmoid colon here is not floppy or redundant enough to twist. But in some people, this part of the colon can elongate over many years for various reasons, with the most common reason being chronic constipation. Now, even in most people with a longer than usual sigmoid colon, a volvulus still remains uncommon. But in a small percentage of people, this colon will twist on itself in a counterclockwise fashion like this. And when this happens, it can cause significant pain in the lower abdomen, along with bloating and severe constipation, and less commonly, nausea and vomiting. Now, this twisting will cause a blockage, obviously, because very little can get past this twist. But the biggest problem is what happens to the blood vessel right here, which supplies blood to this part of the colon. As the colon twists, so does the blood vessel. And this causes a kink in the blood vessel here, which then blocks the blood flow. When blood is no longer able to get to this section of the colon, it becomes ischemic, which is a fancy medical term meaning a lack of blood. And as you can imagine, a lack of blood to any part of the colon, or any part of your body for that matter, is a serious situation. A CT scan is one of the best and most common ways to diagnose this. Here is what a sigmoid volvulus looks like on a CT scan. You can see how part of the volvulus here is demonstrated in this one slice. Now. You would think that a patient with this should go right to the operating room to have this removed. But in fact, for most people, the first step is to actually place a colonoscope carefully up into the colon and untwist it and relieve the blockage. Now, this will not only allow waste material that is backed up to get out, but will also allow the blood to flow again to the colon and keep it healthy. And once we've successfully done this, it's best to then go to the operating room usually a few days later if possible, once the swelling has resolved, because if we don't, this twist will usually occur again in the future. And remember, I can almost always perform this surgery laparoscopically, which means through just a few small incisions. The surgery involves cutting out that redundant piece of sigmoid colon, which is volvulizing, and safely reattaching the two uninvolved ends back together. And I can almost always do this while avoiding a colostomy, which is certainly a plus. And most people are able to go home just a day or two after the surgery. And that's how I treat a sigmoid volvulus. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if there's any other topics or surgeries that you want to see in my future videos, please let me know in the comments below. Tell all your friends you scrubbed in with Dr. Dave today and learned all about a sigmoid volvulus. And if you're feeling brave, check out my surgical video right here with footage directly from the operating room of one of the laparoscopic surgeries that I performed for a sigmoid volvulus. And I hope to see you at my next video.